So Ireland has a long history of peacekeeping around the world, either it be in Africa or in the Middle East, particularly in Lebanon, as I say, in war-torn areas, uh, trying to promote stability, trying to promote peace and understanding, and trying to separate uh, forces in conflict, etc., etc., trying to promote peace and trying to bring stability, etc., etc. So as we see, obviously, with what's happening with the Middle East, it's the terrible situation of what's happening. Uh, right across the board, it's, it's absolutely terrible uh, what's happening to innocent people, etc., etc., women and children. Uh, it's 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 a sad state of affairs, um. But these things happen in the modern world. That we, in the modern world, this th these things are still happening. It happened during the Second World War, etc., etc. Suffering, uh, on an unimaginable scale, uh, right across the board. And they shouldn't be happening. We should have learned from the past of the suffering of the past, and not bring it into the present. But a lot of our peacekeepers at the moment, particularly totally Irish soldiers, are stuck. Uh, I suppose surrounded as the war to use on the blue line in between Lebanon and Israel. And obviously the Israeli army is advancing into Le uh, Lebanon. And uh, so there's great concern, particularly because Israel asked UNIFIL, which is the United Nations basically, uh, the UN basically peacekeeping, which is under the Irish obviously defence forces that go and send troops there. So basically they're not really under the Irish command, they're under the UNIFIL command of the United Nations peacekeeping, because the United Nations peacekeeping. Uh, so there is lo there's about 300, 400 Irish personnel that there's totally the metal base at an outpost, I suppose you would call it too, in Lebanon. And obviously this way the army doesn't want uh, peacekeepers, etc., etc., United Nations personnel there. Because obviously if things are uh, happening around them, the war crimes, etc., etc., there's people there to call it out um, and to, you know, to uh, call out war crimes or call out different things. Because basically that's the United Nations there. But it remains obviously the United Nations to stop conflict. And obviously the peacekeepers have stopped conflict there. And it's, it's very uh, uh, disrespectful, in my opinion, that a country would demand, in, in my opinion, what its way is doing, demand that Irish troops, along with other troops from Poland, etc., etc., uh, be recalled, I suppose, back uh, to their home countries, etc., etc., which shouldn't be the case, because no, no country should dictate where peacekeepers uh, go or what they do, etc. So no country has the authority to that or to demand them be moved, etc. Cetera, et cetera. That's what's happening with the Israeli government at the moment. And particularly the Irish Defence Forces, they uh, kind of been surrounded by tanks, etc. Et um, and it's it's a very difficult situation. Now, to be totally honest, we should have probably pulled our members of the Defence Forces, and I know people would say we shouldn't have done it, because we'd basically be just giving the Israeli government to go on ahead, basically. There'd be nothing to do to stop you. Um, you know, with the Irish people, peacekeepers, they obviously they need to kind of behave a bit, and obviously they can't, can, you know, do things because it's obviously observers there from the international community, um, etc., etc. But uh, to be totally honest, it is a very dangerous situation, it's a very hostile situation, particularly for young men. There's a lot of them are young men and women, uh, you know, and again they will get very little money for doing it, uh, and putting themselves at risk, you know, and that's what's happening at the moment. The, these members of the Feds force are putting themselves in harm's way. Uh, and we don't want another situation like in the Congo. I'm sure people remember in the 60s when the Irish peacekeepers were there in the Congo. Uh, it was a very difficult situation for the Irish Army Javas, for people to remember that uh, too. Um, but again, as I said a bit in the beginning of the video, Ireland has a long tradition uh, of being a peacekeeping nation that wants to preserve peace and wants to uphold international law, etc. etc. Um, and we have a long time doing it. Uh, and I do think it's important, uh, and maybe in the past I didn't reflect on it, but particularly in, in the modern world, I do think it's important as a small country, as a country that never, you know, never wants to be an aggressor, what's never wants to take anybody's land, uh, who's just happy where it is, basically what I'm trying to say, uh, that we try and promote peace and try and support, promote stability around the world. Uh, and particularly the one thing is understanding uh, and trying to get a consensus. And I do think as a neutral country, particularly, uh, more than any other country, I suppose, nearly in Europe as a neutral, independent country. Uh, we do have a big role to play, and as John F. Kennedy famously said in the House of the Oaktas and Dáil Éireann, uh, Ireland has something to give to the world, and that is peace. Uh, and I do believe in that very strongly, that Ireland has a great role in the world to promote peace, especially as we see United Nations peacekeeping, uh, near the longest in the world, the United Nations peacekeeping. And that's a good tradition to have, and it's a good... Um, it's a good example of our country too that we're not out to take over anybody's land we're there to, to help, we're there to promote peace we're there to promote stability uh, and to preserve you know, 
uh, the stability of the world, etc., etc., to, to stop human suffering. But unfortunately, it has failed uh, in the last few years um, in terms of Lebanon and stuff. But that's not Irish people, peacekeepers' fault, etc., etc. They do their best. Uh, the fact that um, it, it's, it's a lot of factors, so we could be here all night discussing them, but. Uh, but we do, we should pray for our soldiers that's over there, for any soul, even the Polish soldiers, any United Nations soldiers, both in Ireland over there. Uh, we should pray for the innocent people that have been killed and been hurt. Uh, we should say a prayer for them uh, and hope the peace and some kind of peace and some kind of understanding can be found. Uh, please God, there will be some kind of understanding uh, in these conflicts across the world. Hopefully there will um, and that your peace can be restored. But um, it, it's unfortunate that, that your peace is a long way off. And that's the sad reality of it. But uh, it's it's a very difficult situation for our soldiers. And to be told, we probably should have pulled them out. Um, stop. Now, well, obviously, they're on the ground the majority of the time. They're in bunkers, etc., etc. Uh, in the outposts, etc. Because obviously, shelling, etc., etc. Um, but it's a very difficult one. And I think the main thing, too, uh, I don't think in this country, particularly when Sean Rooney was killed last year, um, you know, I don't think many only Joes appreciate the men and women of the army that goes out and does this, um, goes out and peace keeps and put themselves at risk because then that's the sacrifice. That's that's basically the danger. It's not like a holiday. Um, you don't know if you're going to come back. It's supposed to happen. You go over to another country outside your state, uh, and that's the thing. You just don't know. It's, you're going into the unknown, as they would say in, in the defense forces. You don't know what you're going to face, and that's. That's just the truth. I'm sure all these peacekeepers that are over there now never thought there would be an, an act of war zone uh, in another country where they're shelling and when there's killing, etc. So I don't think they ever would have thought that. But long story short, uh, we should be more appreciative for men and women of the Fed's forces. Um, and please, God, again, we get them back all safely uh, as soon as humanly possible. But uh, I think there's an omen too for the Irish state that we have to try and try and talk to our sides to try and find some solution uh, and some kind of peace settlement or even ceasefire to get humanitarian aid and etc etc um, because it's unimaginable suffering that's happening across the Middle East and even in Europe too um, with the Ukrainian war etc etc it's unimaginable suffering uh, and really we should try as a nation as a country as an independent uh, sovereign state as particularly a neutral country where we should try and work with all sides to try and find some solution to end this conflict because again the main thing is in terms of neutrality is that Ireland has nothing to gain it's not bound by any, any military alliance it's bound by world peace uh, and I think that's the main thing we should have to get across to all the world um, you know and I think that's the main thing we should do but hopefully again as I say uh, uh, peace can be restored and hopefully we get our men and women of the defence forces back um, as quick as humanly possible um, and hopefully the conflict will end as soon as possible too thank you